Good morning. Uh, welcome to worship this morning. I'm Dave Burrell. I'll be your reader. Uh, and uh, we've had our first little New Hampshire snow, although living in New Hampshire, it was basically nothing. So <laughs> we're here. Uh, welcome to you here in person and those of you who are joining us uh, by Zoom. Uh, our first announcement is basically a question mark. Special trustees meeting, and I'll call on Bernie to address that. Thank you, Bernie. Uh, so no meeting tonight, and uh, further instructions will be forthcoming. Our uh, Christmas Eve service at 5 p.m. on Friday in the sanctuary, candlelight service of lessons and carols. Our Advent series continues this week on Wednesday evening at 7 p.m., together with St. Luke's UMC by Zoom meeting. Sabbath services are in person at the Hope Center each Saturday at 4 p.m. for a celebration of worship, communion, and small group discussion. That's also available through Zoom. Uh, offering, tithe, and pledges can be sent by check to 8 Pleasant Street, Salem, New Hampshire, or placed in the offering plates. Are there any other announcements? Yes. Uh, a word on the Sabbath service this coming Saturday. Uh, there will be uh, no Sabbath service uh, so that folks can uh, celebrate with families and, and be together uh, for Christmas Day. Thank you. Right, any other? If not, please rise and join me in the call to worship. Come, joy, lighten our spirits. Come, peace, ease our frantic worry. Come, Jesus, be born in us. Come, God. Advent, we remember the light that shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not overcome it. Lord, 
though sorrow may last for the night, joy comes in the morning. For all who face the sting of loss, God's word speaks. Though sorrow may last for the night, joy comes in the morning. For all who wrestle with the unknown of tomorrow, God's word speaks. Though sorrow may last for the night, joy comes in the morning. For all who battle the questions that arise in the silence, God's word speaks. Though sorrow may last for the night, joy comes in the morning. This morning we light four candles. When the darkness of life feels overwhelming, the first candle ignites our hope in God's unfailing truth. When the chaos of life seems all-consuming, the light of the second candle reveals the Prince of Peace. When humanity responds with senseless acts and hurtful words, the light of the third candle radiates God's command to love as we have been loved. The fourth candle reminds us that no matter what our circumstances, there is joy in the coming Christ who opens our eyes to the everlasting light. God, we thank you for the way you have guided us throughout our Advent journey. As we move closer to the celebration of your birth, we sense the wonder and joy. Continue to break into the dark areas of our world as you open our eyes to your hope, peace, love, and joy all around us. By your light, guide us as we walk in faith. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning and welcome to worship, Pleasant Street United Methodist Church. I'm Ben. Welcome to all joining us online. I'd like to share a joy to start us off. Milka has finished her second semester of theological studies. She ha has turned in all of her work and finished every exam. And uh, it's a lot less um, <laughs> cloudy, I don't know. <laughs> um, theological studies has a way of really uh, shaking us up. And uh, I also turned in my last paper this past week, so we're breathing more easily at home today, uh, <laughs> these days. Um, I welcome you all to share joys, concerns. Yes, Tinson. <laughs> Tinson also grateful to have finished his semester, adding on to that joy. <laughs> yes, Diane.
<laughs> Thank you, Diane. Diane sharing Christmas greetings from Marge, who misses us all, loves us. And a uh, special shout out to Webby, uh, if you're watching um, from Marge. Merry Christmas. Yes, Bernie. All right, Bernie sharing the joy that this is the season of giving and that everyone is getting into the Christmas spirit. Thank you, Bernie. <laughs> well, let's enter into our prayer time with our prayer hymn, O Lord, Hear My Prayer. Dear God, as we gather as we present our hearts before you, we give you thanks for the gift of your joy. We give you thanks for this season of giving. For the reminder, God, that life is a gift. You have entrusted your life to us. Reign in our hearts today, Holy Spirit. Have your way. Give us eyes to see and ears to hear. Your stirring. the expectation the promise of what we have known and has and what has yet to come into being God, we thank you for 
new learning. for how our minds are stretched, challenged, opened, how you shake us up. ever more fully rest in what is eternal and what is true. We thank you, God, for Christmas greetings. We pray your blessing over March. And Webby, and God, even as I'm praying, I remember another prayer request that came our way. Miss Kay has requested prayers for a six-year-old boy named Jasper, grandson of a dear friend of Kay's, and they live in Missouri. Jasper has had COVID and is in the hospital with complications from that. So Lord God, we lift up Jasper today. and all those who are presently in the grips of sickness. Those sorting through the devastations of last week's tornadoes. Have mercy on us, Lord God. God, we thank you that your eternal word is what guides our days and offers strength to our hearts. And that these words which Jesus taught his disciples are words to live by. And so we pray, our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Bernie. Good morning, Ruthie. Ah, and I see you have brought someone special. Who is that? Your baby doll. Does your baby doll have a name? Emily. Emily? Oh, nice name. Awesome. Well, today we are lighting our fourth candle, the candle of joy. And so, yes, joy. 
which is awesome. And so this week, I actually found something on the internet called a joy list. And this list is basically a list of activities that you write down. Um, and these activities are something that brings joy to you in your life. So today, I brought this big piece of paper, and we're going to actually write our joy list together. And so let's remember that there needs to be an action verb in it, something that you can do. So my question to you is, what brings you joy during this season? And let's see, Ruthie, do you want to start us off? <gasps> Giving presents to people. Ooh, we like that. Let's see. Hope this doesn't stain. <laughs> Giving presents. Awesome. Next one, Bernie. What's the next one? <gasps> Ooh, decorating cookies. Sorry, decorating cookies as a family. We love that. Any particular um, favorite cookie flavor that you like? Ah. <laughs> uh. Awesome. Yes, decorating cookies with family. Let's see, any other ones that you can think of? Yeah, Ruthie? <gasps> Seeing other people. Ooh, what, uh, what, what people? Oh, cousins. Yeah, seeing, we can say cousins. We can say friends. We can say family that we don't see normally, yeah. Hope you can read my handwriting. <laughs> uh, let's see, let's keep going. Uh, we're making our list and checking it twice. Let's see. And Bernie, can you repeat that one more time? Oh. Oh, <laughs> nice, nice. Ah, uh, wait for them as well. Let's see. For our next one, let's see. I'll, can I add something? Okay, let's see. What I like to do is I like, who likes tea here? Do you like tea? Do you drink tea sometimes? No, it's okay if you don't drink tea. I like to drink peppermint tea, and that kind of soothes my throat, and it kind of reminds me of candy canes. So I'll just put drinking tea. Any other things that we can add to our list here? Let's see, maybe we can ask our audience too. Any others? Peanut gallery. <laughs> Peanut gallery. Any other ones? Yes. <gasps> seeing all the Christmas lights. Yeah, Bernie, Ruthie, do you like seeing all the Christmas lights? Yeah, even the lights here in our sanctuary. Let's see. Cool. Maybe we have time for like one more. Oh, seeing Christmas carols. Yes. Ah, oh, let's see. And Ruthie, how about you? Uh, and oh, decorating the Christmas tree. Awesome. Here, perfect. I'll put Christmas tree. Beautiful. Look at this list, everyone. Wow. Look at that, Bernie and Ruthie. We created this together. Nice. So guess what? There's also, some people also like to celebrate um, and feel joyful about uh, the birth of babies, right? And so oh, let me put this marker down before I color myself. <laughs> uh, so the birth of, uh, at Christmas, we celebrate the birth of, do you know who? Jesus. Jesus, yeah. And so Jesus is the son of God, and he came onto this earth to be our savior. And because of this, he has brought joy into this world. So this week, 
I would love for you all to create your own joy list. You can put, we put seven on here, but you can put like 10 or more. And you can always go on and read your list whenever you feel like you need an extra bit of joy in your life. And also remember that God is here with us. Let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your presence. We thank you that you bring us joy during our seasons of happiness and during our seasons when we're needing just a little bit more comfort. We pray, Lord, Father God, that you teach us and continue to be with us during the season and bless all of our children here in the sanctuary. And in Jesus' name, amen. Our first scripture reading this morning is from Micah, chapter 5, verses 2 through 5. But you, O Bethlehem of Ephratah, who are one of the little clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to rule in Israel, whose origin is from of old, from ancient days. Therefore he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labor has brought forth. Then the rest of his kindred shall return to the people of Israel. And he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And he shall live secure, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall be the one of peace. Please stand as you are able for the reading of the gospel. Our gospel reading this morning is from Luke chapter 1, verses 39 through 55. In those days, Mary set up and went with haste to the Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely, from now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his descendants forever. May God add his blessing to these readings. Amen. Amen. As I have shared a few times now, 
Some years back and prior to seminary, I was part of a mission team working with at-risk children and youth at a shelter in Brazil. Many of the kids had been brought in off the street or were there for protection as witnesses of violent crimes. Others were in the state's foster care system. For many of them, the shelter and its house parents and staff were the only family they had. Former residents who had arrived as children were serving among the leadership. Ours was a support team. Though there was a wide range of ages, our main work as a team was to befriend and mentor the older kids and help them with their eventual transition to life beyond the confines and protection of the shelter. One day, my team leader and I had a visitor approach us and introduce himself. He asked us a number of questions, curious to know more about, about us and about the work we were doing and what had brought us there. I had been prepped before his visit and had learned a bit of his backstory, so I was feeling somewhat intimidated as he asked one question after another. I knew before his arrival that he was a former executive of a multinational chemical company, the name of which you would all recognize. And he was visiting the shelter to learn more about the shelters and our approach in working with the boys there. This man, an American, had met the director of the shelter as part of the US expat community in Brazil, and they had become friends. As this corporate VP had learned the story of the shelter and how it had come into being and the impact it was having on the children's lives, he had decided he wanted to get involved as well. The shelter had had such a high rate of success with the children and youth who were brought through its programs that the state's youth detention system was looking to its goals as a guide. This man was part of a planning group that would be presenting to the state. Before meeting him, I had also learned that he was by then retired from the chemical company and that while he had been very successful in the corporate world, I knew enough about his personal life from my team leader to have the sense that he probably also carried some regrets. Whatever the case, he had a deep desire to pour himself into service, to impact the lives of other people and in turn be impacted with God's love. As we spoke together that afternoon, I felt a certain impatience emanating off of him. After some minutes of talking, I began to realize that his expression and tone had moved from impatience to something more like disbelief mixed with wonder, even envy. He wanted to know how we knew what we knew, that we would be working with the kids in that place at our re relatively young ages. It dawned on me slowly that someone who had acquired every manner, manner of worldly success, status at a po powerful multinational company, money, respect, someone who I had even felt intimidated about meeting, was wondering how on earth we knew to be where he had so lately realized was where he wanted to be, doing exactly the kind of work that he had come to know he very much wanted to devote his own time and energy to support however he could. This was a humbling moment in my life that still kind of haunts me. That evening, the director of the shelter and the former corporate executive had dinner in the cafeteria and the children crowded around the director as they did whenever he came for a visit. They hugged him and cheered. And as he interacted with them, the tears of joy just streamed down his face. At that moment, it seemed plain to me how the director had influenced his friend to take part in his mission at the shelter. It was love. Today's reading is the Magnificat. Mary's prayer after meeting with her cousin Elizabeth. In 1 John chapter 4, we read that God is love. Taking that statement and the hymn we will sing shortly as, our, as my guide, I thought we might go on a little thought journey with our passage for today. If God is love, it means that anywhere the words reference God, we can substitute love there and still have the same meaning 
but with a slightly different flavor. I invite you to have a listen to this passage again, and as you do, to consider Mary's soul as a lens through which love is magnified. And Mary said, My soul magnifies love, and my spirit rejoices in love, my Savior. For love has looked with favor on the lowliness of love's servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed, for love has given things for me, and holy is love's name. Love's mercy is for those who fear love, from generation to generation. Love has shown strength with love's arm. Love has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. Love has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. Love has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. Love has helped love's servant Israel in remembrance of love's mercy according to the promise love made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. God's love is made manifest, made clear through tangible, concrete actions that touch the lives of the people around us with care. Mary here speaks of her lowliness. And by the context, we may think of Mary's humility of heart. And that is certainly a part of this. But beyond her humility and honest reckoning of herself before love, we also know that Mary is poor. Mary does not have any recourse before the powers of governance that dominate the lives of the Judean people at this point in history. She has no political clout. She cannot influence the king of the land, Herod, to change his policies to something other than rule by fear, extortion, and threat of violence at the hands of the legions of armies at his command. Mary's is a a people with no recourse before the law, with no power in an earthly sense. And still, something within Mary knows that many centuries later, people like us would call her blessed, would be retelling her story to learn and live what she knew, would be setting our hearts and minds to take part in the planning, the preparation, and expectation of love's birth among us all as well. For love has done great things for me, and love's name is holy. For John Wesley, many centuries later, going to serve with and among the poor was to meet Christ. Week after week, the Food for the Hungry food pantry meets our neighbors with a tangible expression of love. And this work was born out of a desire and a dream to serve the hungry of Salem and surrounding towns. This work was born from the people of Pleasant Street, UMC, from you. I received word of some statistics from Phyllis. She wrote, on average, we welcomed 80 individuals per month this past year. And that includes a few home deliveries, and that's 960 for the year. This represents an average of three in each family times 960. So this means we provided food for 2,800 individuals. By the food bank's formula, that's three meals per day per person for three days. So that's approximately 24,000 meals. Isn't that amazing? (laughs) Over these past months, we have been learning about and planning for a work in this place to offer an island of peace for isolated and lonely neighbors. Folks from the community who have come to walk through the space, bless you, (laughs) have a certain 
sense of awe about how beautiful this, this space is, what the church has to offer in terms of the kinds of works and activities and things that could take place here among us. God is already stirring dreams I would ask, how is love stirring within you today? How is love calling us to bring new life and laughter and the joy of Christ among us to being with what has been entrusted to our care? How might these halls echo with the laughter of children, resound with music and celebration of God with us? How might we join with Mary in the strength of humility to declare love's reign in our hearts today? For love has done great things among us. And love will continue to do great things among us. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit of God, and search our hearts with the light of Christ. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, the first commandment is this, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Come, let us return to the Lord and say, Lord our God, in our sin we have avoided your call. Our love for you is like a morning cloud, like the dew that goes away early. Have mercy on us. Deliver us from judgment. 
bind up our wounds and revive us. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. <laughs> peace. Dear God, may love be born in our hearts each day, each moment. Align us with your will and your ways. Let us give as you have given to pour out our lives in service of your name. Love, which is the eternal word and sovereign authority, true authority, blessed authority on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Final prayer hymn, <laughs> prayer hymn is Once in Royal David's City, number 250. <laughs>
May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully that you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Now all glory to God, who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or imagine. All glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve in Jesus' name.